Today's episode of Ham Radio 2.0 is brought to you by Bridgecom Systems. Are you looking for some 220 gear for the 1.25 meter amateur band? Think Bridgecom Systems for quality products and top-notch customer service. Featuring a new 220 mobile and HT, plus repeaters for all three bands, 2 meters, 220, and 440. See Bridgecom's full line of products at their website, www.bridgecomsystems.com, or just give them a call directly. When you think 220, think Bridgecom. Hey guys, good afternoon. Welcome to Ham Radio 2.0, live from the Ham Shack, except that I'm live from Orlando today. Spending a week out here this week uh, doing some stuff for my daytime job. Brought my camera with me, and uh, it's going to be a good opportunity to uh, get some video work done. And I'm sitting here in the hotel room right now, just uh, set up. It's about uh, 8 o'clock in the evening, uh, Eastern Standard Time, out here in Orlando. So looking forward to visiting the uh, AES Amateur Electronic Supply guys um, this week while I'm here. So might uh, might see that in an, in an upcoming episode, uh, two or three episodes from now. Today we're going to be looking at a DMR presentation I gave at the Mars Club. Mars is M-A-R-S, uh, which stands for Metro Crest Amateur Radio Society. They are a club in Carrollton, Texas, right uh, just north of Dallas. And actually, a little uh, piece of uh, trivia here, I was actually born, I was born in Dallas, but at the time, my parents were living in Carrollton. So I grew up in Carrollton. I was essentially born in Carrollton in the hospital. They didn't have a hospital in Carrollton back when I was born, but uh, but we were living at Carrollton, and I lived in Carrollton until I was about 14 years old, and then we moved uh, to another small town out here, uh, just not too far away. So... Pretty much spent most of my childhood in Carrollton. It's changed a lot since then. And um, uh, back then, uh, <laughs> it was a long time before I knew about amateur radio. I don't know if there was a ham radio club back then or not. I couldn't tell you. But uh, but these guys are a good uh, group of guys. There was uh, I'd never been to any of their meetings before, so I attended their meeting one day last week. They had asked me to come out and do a DMR presentation, which they saw me do at HamCom in um, June of 2016. A couple of the guys were there, and they said, hey, we want you to do this for our club. I'm like, okay, cool. So I went out there and did that, and since uh, since I didn't get the recording, or at least I didn't get the last 10 minutes of it, of the presentation I did at HamCom, I decided to record it and put it on uh, this episode. But I wanted to get... Uh, get this uh, intro done while well, I had some time out here. Um, really nice weather out here in Orlando uh, this week. About about like Texas, about like home. It's not quite as humid. Uh, it's just as hot. It's just not quite as humid. But, uh, but it rained earlier today, and now the skies are clear. Typical Florida weather, right? So uh, let's take a look at my DMR presentation for the Mars Club, uh, which was done in July of 2016. If you found me on YouTube, go head up my website at livefromthehamshack.tv. You'll be able to see all the videos I've done to date and be able to see what's upcoming and be able to um, uh, make comments on the videos that are there and see kind of where we're going with the series. 73, let's take a look at this presentation. Okay, rather than waiting for this thing all night long, if uh, I'll go ahead and get started. Does that, um, Hopefully it'll. <laughs> oh, there it's. See, I started talking and now it's up to seven of eight now. So, does anyone, has anyone, I know there's a couple of you around the room I've talked to on DMR. Has anyone never heard of DMR? No idea what I'm talking about. Okay. All right. This will cover, this is mostly an intro, but it, it goes into a little bit deeper stuff. Um, do you guys have a fusion repeater? Yeah, like this club has a fusion repeater? Okay. 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 Hey, do you use it on digital at all? They're they're on AMS mode, what they call AMS. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Um, this um, this is obviously mostly going to focus on DMR, but I do a little bit of comparisons between uh, DMR fusion, D star, and some T P25. Kenwood's got one that they call Next Edge or NXDN. I do a little comparison between the 
all the different digital modes and it's not really a uh, the purpose of the presentation is not to say DMR is better than everybody and here's why it's just to kind of say you know I prefer DMR I do but I I have a couple of fusion radios I've got a couple of P25 radios so um, there's uh, it's probably rebooting now um, so if, if you guys have any, if, when I say P25, does anybody not know what I'm talking about? Never, never heard of P25. Okay, um, all the police and you've heard about all the police and fire departments in the area going digital. They say, oh, they're going to go. Do, that's what they are. That's what P25 is. It's um, most of the departments around here. Of course, I'm in Grapevine, so all the departments in mid cities, uh, city of Dallas, um, city of Denton, I think, and. Uh, Louisville, Flower Mound, Highland Village, all those guys up there. Carrollton, the colony, I think, is, is all digital now. That's P25 is what they're all on. Carrollton is, is having problems and they're back to their analog system. They're back to the analog. Is that that uh, Harris system they had? Yeah, yeah I heard about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, fun times, right? So, uh, okay, that's just about there. So, but if you guys have any questions, um, I'm recording this uh, for myself. So Andy said he was going to report court it too, but I'll give him a copy of mine if he wants it. So, but I'm just make you pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, that that's just that's just for myself up there that I'm recording. I have a YouTube channel I put some stuff on, so I've got a couple of DMR episodes on that YouTube channel. And let's see. So I'm going to put I'm going to wipe this thing and put fedora on it I think <coughs> but uh, okay so uh, my name is Jason I'm a KC5 HWB there it goes do not turn off your computer um, I run uh, I run the website grapevineamateurradio.com um, where I do a little bit of online sales and um, I sell DMR radios there but I, I, I among other stuff so I do some reseller stuff for main trading company uh, if you see any Yezu stuff on my website that's all reselling stuff for those guys um, but uh, there's a lot of places online to buy DMR radios you can buy them on Amazon and get them from a lot of different retailers HRO was slow to get on board but they're selling DMR radios now as well um, so if you bought a DMR radio from somewhere else you know shoot me an email I, I'm not I don't really care the website that I run is a part-time thing so I have a daytime job I work in IT during the week for a pharmacy for a local pharmacy and um, so I just do the, that kind of on the side I have started a new YouTube series uh, called ham radio 2.0 um, which I focus on what's new in ham radio being 2.0 like a uh, software so I, I have I have about 49 episodes up right now uh, I was working on episode number 50 earlier today and yesterday um, I'm doing some unboxing and testing of the new IC7300 kind of a neat radio if you guys haven't seen that yet um, this one that I'm recording here will probably be episode 53 or 4 or something like that so anybody go into anybody drive around to go to a bunch of ham fest long way away like I do I'm probably the only one there's a ham fest in Texas City this weekend Saturday yeah yeah that may be too far <laughs> there's one in Oklahoma City the following weekend the Texas City one's probably going to be bigger, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. So let me find my presentation here. Do, do, do. But I'll be giving this talk at Texas City. They called me like Monday of this week. And they said, do you have any presentation on DMR? And I said, yeah. So I gave this talk at Hamcom in June. So if any of you, I don't, I don't recognize any of you from that talk, but that it was about the size of room actually and it was full about, about this many people in there as well so um, if you saw that it might be or there it is it might be a duplicate uh, duplicate of something sorry this is taking so long yeah yeah well this and this is my programming laptop so I have to run Windows I can't run Linux on this because uh, chirp and well, Chirp's probably about it. Chirp's the only thing that'll run on Linux. Motorola, they don't make Linux software. A bunch of the Chinese guys, they don't make Linux software. So I got to run this because of that. So, uh, here we go. Okay. Once you put an SSD on a laptop, you're ruined for life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. Uh, lights? 
Can you turn the lights down? Yes, we have lots. How's that? Is that better? Okay. All right. So, introduce myself at all. Uh, Kent Winks, a friend of mine out in Bedford, WA5YXS, he put together probably about 30-40% of this presentation. He had a presentation of his own that he's given at several clubs around the area and I took his presentation, added my own stuff to it, and updated it a bunch. Uh, Larry Shafron, if any of you from the Denton Club, members of the Denton Club, you probably know Larry. He's, he owns three, the three 900 megahertz analog repeaters up there are his. And he's got two DMR repeaters in Denton, one UHF and one 900 megahertz, and he's really heavy into to, to DMR right now as well. Larry's a great guy if, if you guys know him. Um, this is me here. Uh, great Vine Amateur Radio, of course. Ham Radio 2.0 is my YouTube series. Live from the hamshack.tv is where the YouTube series website is, but you've gotten to YouTube and find, you can find it there as well. We have a Yahoo group for DMR in the state of Texas. I called it DFW DMR because it started out as Dallas Fort Worth, but it's expanded all of Texas now. Anybody who's interested in DMR throughout the state of Texas is welcome to join that Yahoo group and we try to keep up with all the different repeaters and happenings and what's new in DMR and throughout the entire state. I can make this presentation available to you guys if you want. Hamcom has it on their website actually. So, that's a hot mic. Okay, so what is DMR? DMR is digital mobile radio. Uh, some people will ask, um, is this a Motorola system? Uh, yes and no. DMR is actually a European telecommunication standard, uh, what we call an ETSI standard that was uh, first ratified in 05 and it meets the narrow band uh, specifications for that. Uh, Motorola Moto Turbo is what, Moto Turbo is what Motorola gave their version of DMR and they've added a couple of bells and whistles to it but it's all the same standard, it's all the same voice decoder, what we call a vocoder and it's all the same type of technology to where everything will talk to one another. Motorola did not invent DMR, they didn't create it. They had a big hand in developing it in the United States and bringing it to America but they are not the creators of DMR as much as they might want you to believe. So um, there's about, uh, and I'll get into this here in a little bit, there's about um, 40 plus manufacturers worldwide making radios for DMR at this point in time. Um, that's one of the things I had to update on Kent's slide. His slide said 31 and it's more than that now. So the one thing that DMR, we'll get into this a little bit more detail in a bit too, also this is two time slot time division multiple access, you might recognize TDMA, it's old cell phone technology. Before they had LTE, before they had GSM, they used to have TDMA. Uh, the Sprint network used to be TDMA and um, it's time displacement. This is what we call time slots on DMR. This is how we can have two conversations on the same repeater and the same frequency going at the same time and those conversations are completely separate from one another. So your repeater is basically two repeaters built into one and I'll get into that here in just a little bit. Four level FSK modulation and cutting edge forward error correction, what is called FEC, basically the same thing that Fusion has. has. Uh, four level FSK is Fusion, forward error correction is, uh, in fact that's one of the, I was studying for my extra test a couple months ago and one of the questions in was what is F FEC in relation to digital communications and it's forward error correction. It's basically they add, if you know what a packet is, you know anything about networking and voice digital packets, it, they add a little bit of extra information on the beginning of the packet to correct for um, longer distance communications and more legible communication to where it's cl a clearer sound on the other end. In a nutshell, that's what it is. So there's a DMR association that is uh, equipment for that is responsible for equipment interop that uh, pretty much anybody can join because it's an open standard. I'll go through these kind of quick. Uh, DMR tier one is basically what it is. Some people will refer to this as DPMR. Um, DPMR is what if you lived in uh, the UK, in England or any of the countries over there uh, and you went into like a store and bought a FRS type radio and you wanted it to be digital, DPMR is what you would pick up. It's an unlicensed, meaning it's no license required digital voice mode. Sometimes it's called DMR tier one, sometimes it's called DPMR but it's basically unlicensed FRS type service that's digital instead of analog. We don't use it much here in the states. It's legal to use, we can use it, but uh, some people will walk around at Hamfest and talk on that because nobody else is listening to them. So if you want to have a private conversation, that's one way to do it. Uh, DMR tier two is pretty much what we have and use in amateur radio. DMR tier two standard 
is, a, is the two tier, uh, two slot TDMA 12.5 kilohertz peer to peer repeater mode specification resulting in a spectrum efficiency of 6.25 kilohertz per channel. What that means is you, you guys probably know what narrow band and wide band is as far as FM repeaters goes. This is narrow band, but it's ultra narrow band. So you've got two channels going on inside of that 12.5 kilohertz bandwidth. Uh, they're 6.25 kilohertz each. And through that, you can transmit voice or data or both. Uh, similar to what Fusion does when you're talking to someone else on a Fusion digital connection and your radio will tell you how far away that person is, it's transmitting data. Similar to that. DMR Tier 3 is the exact same thing, except it incorporates trunking. Uh, we don't typically use DMR Tier 3 in amateur radio. Um, some uh, public service municipalities, uh, some fire departments and police departments up in the state of Oklahoma uh, use DMR instead of P25, and uh, they, will, they will incorporate trunking in their system. Um, I don't know of anybody in Texas who's, who does it, who uses DMR instead of P25. There's probably, there probably is someone, but I, I'm not aware. There's nobody in Dallas-Fort Worth. I know that for sure. Down south, I don't know. But we don't use uh, Tier 3 a whole lot in, um, in amateur radio. So if you ever, if you find something online, somebody sends you a link to say, hey, check out this new radio, and you're wondering if, you're, if, and if it's a DMR radio, and you're wondering if it's compatible with the repeaters in Dallas-Fort Worth, if it's DMR Tier 2 compatible, then you're compatible with what we've got here and everything else that's in the United States on amateur radio. So this is a slide that kind of compares the two, um, not the two, uh, six. Well, eight, actually eight. So DMR is TDMA with four level FSK C4FM. Some, sometimes uh, Fusion folks will say their repeaters are C4FM and while that is not wrong, it's also not complete. Um, C4FM, DMR is uh, C4FM TDMA while Fusion is C4FM FDMA. There's this frequency displaced um, multiple division access, I think is what it is. Um, so they, um, they don't use two time slots like DMR does, um, but, it's, but, it's, but they're both C4FM technology. Um, they both use the same what's called AMBE plus two codec. Um, a codec is basically what decodes and encodes and decodes your voice when you transmit and then when you receive on the other end. It's, it's called a, um, it's the, the vocoder or um, codec chip that is responsible for converting your voice from analog that we speak, human voice is considered analog, into a digital signal. So again, if you're looking at a DMR radio online and you want to know if it's compatible, if it says it's got the AMBE plus two chip, then you're going to be compatible with the west, rest of DMR. Unlike DMR and Fusion, D-Star uses an AMBE chip. There's no plus two after it, so it's a little bit older technology with a GMSK instead of a four-level FSK. The only reason that is is because D-Star has been around a lot longer. It's older technology. It's like comparing a uh, rear projection big screen TV built in 1995 to a plasma built in 2005. They both work. They both get the job done. If you want to watch the Cowboys on Sunday, you can use either one, but which one's going to look better? So it's kind of, that's, that's kind of the comparison that I'd like to make. Uh, P25 phase one and phase two. Uh, phase one is what most people are around here. The, uh, the upgrade, the cost of equipment for P25 is pretty high, um, especially if um, going to phase two, you basically have to rip your whole system out and replace everything. So it's almost like a whole nother system. Um, most of the places around here are not, uh, are not phase two. But there are three or four amateur radio repeaters on P25 in the area. There's a couple, in, there's one in Arlington, one in Fort Worth, one in Richardson. And the Denton guys are talking about putting up a um, P25 repeater also. So if you just really can't get enough radios in your truck, then <laughs> you, can, you can use P25 on amateur radio if you want to. Uh, other, other modes include IDAS, DPMR, we talked about DPMR a second ago, NXDN, which is similar to D-Star. NXDN is uh, Kenwood Next Edge. Um, they have their own digital technology. A couple of the guys, a couple of the clubs down in Lufkin, Texas, put up a couple of NXDN repeaters on amateur radio frequencies and they use that digital mode down there. I don't know why. Maybe one of them works for Kenwood. Got the repeaters at a reasonable price. I don't know of anybody else in Texas who uses that technology. 
Uh, Kenwood is a member of the, of the DMR Association, and they make DMR radios, but they're not sold in the United States. If you go uh, Google Kenwood DMR, you'll find some really sweet looking HTs that are sold in England. I don't know why, but they're, they're a member of the association. ICOM's a member of the association. They said, yeah, we signed up, but we're never going to make a DMR radio. That's ICOM for you. So digital versus analog. Uh, if you're used to operating analog repeaters, you notice how as the farther you get away from a repeater, everybody knows you know, your signal starts to degrade, you get scratchy, you get noisy, you may, you may drop out of the repeater, you got a lot of snap, crackle, pop. Using the forward error correction that digital has, and this is true for both DMR and Fusion, uh, using the forward error correction, you'll be able to go a farther distance before you basically just cut off. You basically there one second and half mile down the road you're gone. So now you'll hear people drop out of the repeater sometimes and sometimes they'll kind of drop in and out of the repeater the same way you do in analog. But when they're in there, they're in there solid. And when they're not, they're not. So it's very off on, like digital, like, like CW is off on, off on. So <coughs> that is basically how the um, digital versus analog, how the, the repeater signal gets weaker downlink until you can no longer hear the repeater. So, which is the use of forward error correction. And that's what I just said a minute ago. So that's two slides. I always forget that's two slides. So, so two time slot TDMA. Here's a little graphical representation that I got from Kent. Um, you've got repeater at the top system here. In order to get two different independent conversations of one another, you've got two repeaters combining equipment with antenna and maybe a combiner or a circulator. Two different frequencies and people on two different radios. With a two channel TDMA system, you can have two separate conversations going at the same time. I can be talking to one of you guys and then two of you guys can be talking to each other both at the same time on two separate time slots on the repeater and we will not hear each other at all. And that's done by the way that time displacement works is it basically quicker than the human ear can hear. Your, your radio is keying up and unkeying and rekeying up very quickly. So it takes advantage of that very fast key and unkey to use two time slots with, within the same space, the same bandwidth and the same frequency. So <coughs> sometimes you'll hear people talk about some of the Chinese radios where if you get farther out away from the repeater they'll say, oh they bleed over into the other time slot. It's because of the distance. The, the standard, since, since, the t since the TDMA is constantly keying and unkeying, there's a, a, limit, a more limited distance to where you can actually get into the repeater and make uh, a legible conversation and that distance is generally considered to be about 75 miles. So there's a, there's a DMR repeater on the top of the green building downtown Dallas. I have talked on that repeater from the north side of Corsicana. I've talked on that repeater from Canton. I've talked on that rep repeater from Denton and from almost out to Weatherford going out 20 headed west. So 75 miles is a really long way. It's, and I only got to go 75 miles with the repeater and then, 75, and then the repeater can go 75 miles in any direction it wants to. So there's a limit there but the limit's pretty big. But that's, that's basically how TDMA works is that it's keying and unkeying the repeater at the same time so that it, it separates those two. When this one, when time slot one unkeys, time slot two keys up. So they, they're back and forth like this the whole time and you can have two conversations going at the same time. How much power? Um, most of your, mo well, um, most of the repeaters out there are 50 watts. Uh, the newer Motorola repeaters, they've got 150 watt repeaters. Most of your mobile radios are 45, 50 watts. So about the same as analog for the most part. But your HTs are all four to five watts. Yes, sir. So about the same power as you'd, you'd hear, you'd see an analog. Is the software pretty well open source on this? The yes. Water? Yes. <coughs> the software is open source. Anybody, anybody who wants to make a radio, as China has proved, anyone who wants to make a radio <laughs> can get the AMBE2 plus 2 codec and vocoder and conform to the DMR tier 2 standards and build a radio. <coughs> and they have... Um, Hotspots, everybody familiar with D-Star hotspots? 
Everybody used the DV, form, don, DV dongle on D-Star. They have hotspots like that for DMR as well. They don't have to pay a license? They have to buy... I don't think there does, there's a license. They have to... A company called DVSI makes the chip, so they have to buy the chip from DVSI. But as far as I know, there's no licensing to it. It's, it's open source. The biggest license um, for... Well, according to what the Chinese guys tell me, the biggest cost in license is to get it FCC approved. And that doesn't have anything to do with DMR. Yes? How much does atmospherics affect the physical <coughs> Um Less, because um, when, you get when you get what's called lightning crashes, like you hear really bad on sideband, you don't hear them as bad on FM as you do on sideband, and you don't hear that at all on digital. There's no background noise on digital. There's no squelch tail. There's no courtesy tone. Uh, you, hear, you hear somebody start talking, and then they're gone. There's no background noise to them. Sometimes if somebody's driving down the road with their windows rolled down, it's really noisy. You'll hear some whistle in the background. But for the most part, it's just voice coming through with no other background noise whatsoever. It's very crystal clear. Right. Correct. Yeah. And that's true on Fusion as well. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I talked about the time slots a moment ago. DMR uses two time slots. They uh, geniusly named them time slot one and time slot two to confuse everybody. Um, meaning both can be used at the same time. Uh, time slot two, typically on the DMR MARC network, MARC is uh, MARC, which is Motorola Amateur Radio Club. They were the first ones to, to set up a, uh, a network of repeaters for amateur radio operators in the United States. Um, and they connect to other networks in Canada, South America, Europe, Asia, Australia. There's a, um, I was telling, um, I forget who it was now, I'm telling one of you guys in the back, uh, uh, you, I was telling you, um, the uh, Saturday mornings at 11 a.m. if you have a DMR radio, uh, they do a worldwide net and there's a guy in New York that runs it sometimes, there's a guy in England that runs it sometimes and they will start and they'll say, okay, it's 11 a.m., let's get started, well, it's 11 a.m. Central Time, I think it's what would that be, 5 a.m. Zulu? 5 o'clock Zulu? Um, no, 5 p.m. Zulu. What, it's 1700 Zulu, I think it is. Um, so, uh, so he'll say, okay, let's get started. He'll say, stations in Australia. You'll hear Australian stations key up, and then he'll go around the globe, and he'll start in Asia, South Africa, Africa, blah, 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 blah. He'll go, Dominican Republic has a repeater. Um, Ecuador, I think, has a repeater. Two or three, Brazil has repeaters down there. And he'll go, and then he'll get to the United States, and the United States takes the longest because he goes by call zone. He'll go zone one, zone two, zone three, zone four, all the way through zone zero. And then, and then he'll do a round of rechecks. And at the end of that net, about an hour and a half later, he'll have anywhere from 130 to 150 check-ins from around the globe, all in English, but you'll get to hear all the different accents out there. It's pretty, it's pretty neat to listen to. If you've never listened to it and you got the opportunity to listen to it one Saturday, I recommend it. It's, it's pretty cool to see all the people around the earth using... Uh, the same the same system basically and the way that's done is talk groups so inside every DMR system has two time slots that, like we just said within your time slot you can have a certain number of talk groups you can have well you can have as many talk groups as you want to now you can only use one talk group at a time but each time slot can have however many talk groups assigned to it that you want so basically you can say okay time slot one which we use for wider area networks has um, worldwide, which is worldwide in any language, worldwide English, worldwide Spanish, North America, which is all the repeaters in the United States and in Canada, and say um, maybe some of the regional, well, most of the regional channels are on time slot two. So time slot two will have your more regionalized channels. Uh, there's a southeast region, a mountain region, northeast. Uh, Texas, Oklahoma is considered one region. I don't know why they split it up that way, but they did. Um, and then you've got a statewide talk group for every state that has DMR repeater in it. There's a statewide talk group. So I can key up statewide right now and it'll key up all 30 some odd repeaters in the state of Texas and I can talk to anybody who's near one of those repeaters. And then you have a metro talk group. There's about 10 DMR repeaters in Dallas-Fort Worth right now between Denton down to Venus, over to Fort Worth, uh, Dallas. Um, there's a couple around the mid-cities areas, one up in Saginaw, um, Aubrey. Um, there's actually two in Denton, but one of them is on 900 megahertz. But if you're talking to somebody on 900 megahertz and you're on the Dallas UHF machine, you can't tell what repeater they're on. It's all interconnected. 
So there's about 10 repeaters, so you can key up what's called a Metro Talk group. So when I key up the repeater in Colleyville, it keys up all 10 repeaters in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, including Corsicana, because we have it set up that way right now, which is actually my repeater in Corsicana. And um, we can talk, so I can talk to a guy standing in his living room on an HT in Carrollton on 5 watts, and I can be standing in downtown Fort Worth on the street looking at the building that holds the repeater on 5 watts, and we can talk to each other like we're standing next to one another. So kind of like an interconnect system, but I'm on battery power, so I did that. Kind of like an interconnect system like NCTC. You guys have probably heard of that interconnect system. Uh, interconnect systems like repeaters, but they're IP linked rather than RF linked. <coughs> so, but you can have you can differ differentiate talk groups however you want to. You can uh, create you know, some clubs that put up a repeater and say, okay, we're going to have all the talk groups everybody else around us has, but we're going to have talk group number 8800 on time slot two, and that's going to be our club talk group, and we're not going to publish it. It's not that we're trying to exclude anybody, but that's going to be our club talk group. So everybody in the club, get a DMR radio, program your radio like this, and get on there and we'll be able to just talk to one another in the club. That kind of thing. So you can do stuff like that. These were some one of the, one of the ones I just said. Um, TAC 310 and 311 right there, tactical talk groups. Um, one thing that DMR does not do that, fu uh, not Fusion, that D-Star will do, as I understand, I've not used D-Star. I'm kind of ashamed to say that, but I've never used D-Star. I've been a ham since 94 and I've never used D-Star. Um, but as I understand it, D-Star, if I'm standing here in Texas and I want to key up a repeater in Florida, I can key that repeater up and just connect those two repeaters together, sort of like Echolink. DMR doesn't really have a way to do that. <coughs> the, um, so when I key up North America, it keys up all the repeaters in North America several hundred of them. So the tactical talk groups were, were invented with what's called a push-to-talk timeout. So if I key up the Dallas repeater and activate TAC 310, it brings that talk group, which is there sitting silent, not active, it brings it into to an active status and it leaves it in active status for 10 or 15 minutes, you can set the time. And if I'm talking into that talk group and keying it up at least once every 10 to 15 minutes, then that talk group stays active. So if somebody's in Orlando or California or New York doing the same thing on their repeater on TAC 310, we can talk to one another and it doesn't key up the rest of the repeaters in North America. Now if I'm sitting there listening and two guys start talking and I'm like, okay, I'm done with this conversation, I put my radio down, I'm listening to the Dallas machine and I'm hearing them talk, 10, 15 minutes passes by, my repeater hasn't been keyed in 10 or 15 minutes and it goes silent. And it frees up that time slot and allows you to use that time slot on another talk group somewhere. So it was a way that, that HAMS came up with to say, um, we want to be able to talk across a wide area without tying up all these repeaters at one time. So TAC 310, 311, now they have a 312, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. And they have some other tactical groups also. DCI Bridge is another one. DCI Bridge is connects between the Brandmeister network and the DMR Mark network. There's a fusion link where there's a specific fusion room. I think it's called DMR-fusion-link or something like that. And you can get on a specific talk group on your DMR repeater and talk to the fusion guys in their fusion room through WiresX. There's an all-star link where you can do that. Cactus is a talk group. Uh, anybody here, here the, the Armadillo guys, they have, a, they have a talk group of their own. Cactus is an interconnect between Texas, Arizona, and California. They have a talk group of their own. So, uh, and not cactus. No, not cactus. You don't. Uh, when it first started out, they did, and then they said, "No, we're going to open up to everybody. Everybody can use cactus now." The Dillo guys are still a little bit. Yeah, this is our talk group, but uh, but cactus anybody can use. So that's something that changed just not too not too long ago. Yeah. Right. Does that necessarily mean now they've got to go to every repeater in Dallas and say, do you guys allow this? Talk no. For them to go to the, what is the gizmo? Sea bridge. <laughs> You're talking about a sea bridge. Yeah. Typically, a local repeater talk group, something that you just want to, a talk group that you just want to use on your repeater and not pass around to other re repeaters, that, that's not going to connect to the sea bridge. So you don't, you don't okay, need to do that. Sense. Yeah, you don't but need to do that. You did want it to work across a couple. Yes. Like Dallas, Fort Worth, right. Go to 
Seabridge right, and say, yeah. Of course, they've got a Metro Talk Group now that has passed through the Seabridge, and it keys up all 10 or 11 repeaters in Dallas-Fort Worth. So that happens now. If you wanted something in addition to that, say you wanted Tarrant County, you wanted Dallas County, you wanted Denton County, you know, say if, if we doubled or tripled the number of repeaters in Dallas-Fort Worth and all of a sudden we're like, there's too many people on here, let's split it up by counties and have a county, you could do it that way. The Oklahoma guys, they have, of course, Oklahoma has statewide, the same as Texas has statewide, but they have Oklahoma East and Oklahoma Central. There's not anything in Oklahoma West yet, but they're working on that. So they have a way to key up all the repeaters in the state of Oklahoma in the Tulsa area, and that's the Oklahoma East. And then all the, all the repeaters in the Oklahoma Central area, which is everything from Oklahoma City up to Ponca City, down to the farthest one south, I think, is in Norman, all the way up and down 35, and it keys up all those repeaters without messing with the Tulsa guys. So yeah, you can, you can distribute that however you like. It's up to the Seabridge owner. Let me get to it. I got a lot more <laughs> Okay. No problem. What kind of antennas are we used for all of this? It, it's, it, it's the same antenna, feed line, everything that you would use on a normal UHF repeater. All of the repeat. I didn't think. I don't think I touched on that earlier. All of the repeaters in Texas right now. I think there's a new one going up in. Oh shoot. Um, I can't remember, somewhere out, the, uh, out west, somewhere out on the other side of Weatherford, that's VHF. All the repeaters up until now, except for maybe one or the two of the newest ones, are UHF. Most of the repeaters in the United States of America are UHF, between 440 and 450 megahertz, just the same as an FM analog UHF repeater. Is it dishes? Pardon? Dishes? Dishes? No, no, no. no it's just a repeater. It's just a it's your hand talk. Huh? Pick up your hand talk. It's just a regular hand talk. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same antenna, same feed line, same tower, same frequency, same everything. That that you would you can take it you can in fact when I put my repeater down in Corsicana, the guy the club down there in Corsicana, they were at um, I think it was the Cowtown Ham Fest, they came up to me and they said, Hey, we've got a UHF repeater site and a VHF repeater site, and the UHF repeater died six months ago and we never replaced it. I want to put a DMR repeater in. He's like, what do I need? And I said, you need a DMR repeater that's set to the frequency that your duplexer is tuned for, and your antenna will cover. And that's all you need. We took my repeater down there, plugged it in, I programmed it to his frequency, used the existing duplexer's hardline and antenna, and it's on the air. And his internet connection, of course. So you don't need anything different than you would. You need a DMR radio. You don't need anything different antenna-wise, feed line-wise, or anything like that, duplexer-wise, anything like that, than you would for a regular analog system. Just the international stuff work. Same way. It's all IP connected. Everything's plugged into the internet. So if I'm keying up a repeater, if I key up worldwide right here and I talk to a guy in Germany, then he's talking into a repeater that's connected to the internet in Germany and we're and they're IP connected over the, over the internet like that. Kind of like Echo Link. Kind of like Echo Link. Yeah. But it's but it's a digital system uh, signal instead of an analog signal because Echo Link's analog. <coughs> My throat's really dry, that's why I've been coughing all day. I don't know, this is my allergies, I think. So, zones. In your code plug, you have zones. A zone is no more than a collection of channels. Um, the top of your radio has a 16 channel selector knob, 1 to 16, and it stops, and you have to turn it back if you want to go to another channel. But the, but the radio holds 1,000 channels. So, how do you separate all the channels? Well, you put them into zones. And that's sometimes the word zone confuses people. A zone is no more than a collection of channels. I rearrange all the zones in my handy talkie by repeater. You don't have to do it that way, you can do it however you want to. But I've got a zone for Dallas, I've got a zone for Denton, Saginaw, Fort Worth, Venus, Colleyville, South Lake, Aubrey, um, Corsicana, Denton. And all of those are repeater sites. And then I put all the talk groups for that repeater into that zone, and then I move on to the next zone. That's just the easiest way I've found to do it. Is, is no other reason than that. There's nothing special about it. A color code. Do what? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking to me. A color code is a digital PL tone. That's all it is. Some people will see color code and like, what is that? What color? What does it mean? It doesn't have anything to do with a color like red, green, blue. It's just what they call it. Their color codes are 16 different color codes, and it's just like a digital PL tone. You have to set a color code on your repeater. You cannot go toneless on a DMR system. So every DMR repeater will have a color code assigned to it. And just like 
an analog repeater, if you don't have the correct color, co color code in your code plug in your radio when you key up the repeater, the repeater won't key. Just like if you're if you got PL tone 100.0, you're trying to key a repeater that's on 110.9, it's not going to key the repeater. Same thing. Color codes are, there's only 16 uh, options, 0 through 15. Most of the ones in Dallas-Fort Worth are color code 1. I put mine on color code 9 because I like to be different, but it doesn't mean anything. It just means that's how you got to program your radio. A code plug is a is the file on your computer that you have built to shoot into the radio. Now I find this fascinating. I thought about this right before I gave my Hamcom talk. And a lot of the drawback on DMR is that you cannot program your radio from the front panel. Now they're getting around that. There's a, there's a couple of companies out there where you can go in and you can, once you've got a program into, your, into the radio, you can go in and change some stuff on it. The Titera, the, the, the most popular one, a couple of you guys have the MD380. You can go into an existing channel and change the information, but you can't add new channels to it. And that's one of the first questions I always get about people who are new to UMR. Can I program this from the face? Can I do this? No, you can't. You have to use a computer because it's designed as a commercial system. What I find fascinating is every time I sell a Baofeng or a Waxon radio, the first question everybody asks is, can I program this from my computer? So I'm like, okay, you want to be able to program your analog radio from your computer, but you want to be able to program your digital radio from, by hand. Okay, that's fine. So, <laughs> I mean, best of both worlds, we want to do it both ways, right? So that's, that's fine. But a code plug is when you open up the software, most of the software, unless you have a Motorola, every other company out there has free software you can download, and you plug it into a USB slot in the side of your radio, just like you're programming your Baofeng. You read the radio, it brings in a file, you change that file to say, I want the Dallas repeater, here's the frequency, here's the color code, here's the time slot and talk groups I want. You save that file to your computer, that file is called a code plug. It's just a term that they use to say a computer file that you save on your hard drive that you use to shoot into the radio to tell it where you want to talk. It's a programming file, that's all it is. Did that term probably come from Motorola? Is that yeah. probably where it, it may have come from Motorola, the way that PL Tone came from Motorola, yeah. Motorola, what you used to have to do is program a chip. Yeah. Yeah. And plug it into yeah. your radio, and that chip was called a code plug. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, that's one of their contributions to it, I guess. So, receive groups or RX groups, you'll see a setting for this in your code plug. This is a cool way to say, I talked earlier about how you can have multiple talk groups per time slot, but you can only use one at a time. So, sometimes people call me and they'll be like, hey, I got my radio on right here, and it's got this flashing light on the top indicating activity of some sort but I turn around to the channels and I can't hear anything. Why not? Well, probably because you don't have all the talk groups programmed into your code plug. But if you turn your knob and you say, oh, there's somebody talking, you land on it. A receive group is a way to say, okay, on this, on Tom slot one, on this repeater, I've got four talk groups. Tom slot two, I've got eight talk groups. So you can set up a receive group to say, when I'm on any of these four channels on time slot one, receive all four of these talk groups. So you can always hear any of the activity that's going on in that time slot. So if you look over and you say, hey, my channel indicator says I'm on Metro, but I hear some guys talking on statewide, because you can tell from the display screen what, cha what channel they're on, you can turn your dial over, and when they unkey, you can key up and join in the conversation so you know that people are out there talking. So that's all a receive group is. It allows you to listen to everything on the time slot without having to change the, the, the knob on your on your radio and it also if you want to key up and talk to your buddy over there it also prevents um, doubling of you know if the time slots already in use you're not going to be able to key up another talk group because somebody's already using it no a receive group is per time slot you can set up scan to scan across time slots but a receive group is per time slot. It's the purpose of it is so you can listen to everything on the time slot so that if you need to use one of those talk groups as a sign of that time slot and you have the receive group set up correctly and you don't hear anything, then you know the time slot's open and ready to use. Is that like Metro America? <coughs> unless, unless those two talk groups are on the same time slot. Yeah, we'll use the North America one. Usually, but there's been some deviation to that lately. 
So every repeater is different. Some repeater, the guys out in West Texas, they have time slot two, they have, thank you, time slot two, they have a local group. Time slot one, they have North America, TAC 310, Texas, Oklahoma, Texas Statewide, COM1, and I think one other. But on time slot two, the only thing they have is their local West Texas talk group because that's what they use mostly and they don't want anything else tying it up. So you can set it up however you want. Thanks, Tom. Simplex is typically, Simplex is the same thing it is in analog, really. You just bypass the repeater. You set certain frequencies and you talk direct from one to another. Sometimes you'll hear the term, you Motorola guys have heard the term talk around. Talk around is to say, I'm not going to change frequencies and go to a simplex frequency. I'm going to turn on talk around. So you basically bypass the offset of the repeater. You're keying up and listening on, this, on the receive frequency for the repeater. And the reason that was designed is for to have close conversations where you could talk on the same frequency, but you could still hear activity on the repeater should someone call you. But you, but um, <coughs> most of them, uh, DMR wasn't really designed to do simplex operation, but hams use it to do simplex operation. So we've got designated simplex frequencies. I think they're right here. Yeah. Got designated simplex frequencies to go in there and say, we're going to put in UHF, one of these four frequencies. I've got all four of these programmed in my code plug, and I just call them simplex 1, simplex 2, simplex 3, and 4. And you set up talk group 99, color code 1, and time slot 1. And as long as that is all the same and you're on the same frequency, then you can talk to anyone on Simplex. There was a group of, <clears throat> anybody go to Dayton? And, and yeah, you did, Bill. There was all four of those time slots. I didn't listen to any of the VHF stuff, but all four of those UHF frequencies at Dayton were just covered up with people all, all weekend long. People talking on Simplex all weekend long. Da, 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 da. So a lot of activity on Simplex in Dayton. Probably for P25 and Fusion also. I didn't have one of those radios with me. I stayed on DMR the whole time. But, uh, but I had, I had a two, 220 megahertz radio with me. There's a lot of activity on that one, too. So, so we can use Simplex just the same way that you can. In, uh, and you need to be surprised the distance you could get with a mobile radio in Simplex on DMR. I've talked from Grapevine area in my truck on a 40-watt mobile to uh, Kent WA5YXS down at his office, which is at 30 and Loop 12. And we were, t and it was digital quality, and we sounded like we were sitting in the cab with one another. He was like, "Yeah, I mean, we." He was driving home, and I was driving west. I was driving away from home, and we held a perfectly good conversation. It was, it was great. We tried it on 6.52 simplex or uh, analog also. We could hear each other fine, but there was a lot more noise in the background. <clears throat> so you were asking about a C bridge earlier. This is a bridging hardware. <clears throat> Repeaters can peer to one another, so you can have a master repeater and two or three or four repeaters peered off of the master and then the master is connected to the bridge, or you can just have everything connected to the bridge. A C bridge is simply a gateway. It's a, for you networking guys, it's a gateway, it's a router basically that says allow this traffic and don't allow this traffic and they've got a certain set of um, talk groups that they will allow like a C bridge, the C bridge that my repeater, I have a portable repeater that I drag around with me. I had set up at Hamcom. And it's run by a guy out of Atlanta. And he has about 75 repeaters on his C bridge throughout the country. And he's got <clears throat> repeaters in different states. And like, I have Texas statewide on my repeater because I'm in Texas. But he has access to Florida statewide, Ohio statewide, Oklahoma statewide, Nebraska statewide, several others. Well, he doesn't allow me, since I'm in Texas, to talk on Florida statewide or allow me to talk on Georgia statewide. But he has other, repeaters, other repeater owners in those states, and he'll allow that. So the C-Bridge designates who gets what talk groups where. And it's just, a way to, it's just a way of traffic routing to keep everything from banging into one another is what it, is what it really is. Are there certain manufacturers of C-Bridge? There's only one manufacturer of the C-Bridge right now. It's called Rayfield Communications. And for some reason, I don't know if there's a patent or what um, could be, but, uh, but Rayfield makes the C-Bridge that works with Motorola repeaters right now. And I'm sure that the C-Bridges are not cheap. It's about $750 for the C-Bridge software that runs on a CentOS server, CentOS 6.5 or, or higher. You can buy a complete package 
server installed software um, imaged and ready to go for about twice that about four, four. Pardon? It's like asterisk for radio. Yeah. 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 Like an asterisk server. Correct. Like, yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I never know who my audience is if I, whether I should get too too IT geeky with you guys or not. So I wasn't familiar with this master peer thing so is there a lot of that going on when when Dallas Fort Worth first went online two and a half, three, three and a half years ago on DMR, there was one master repeater, which was the Dallas Green Building repeater, uh, Jim Hopper, W5EBQ, that's his repeater. And Larry has his repeater in Denton, and then there was another repeater, uh, Harold, K5SXK, and Fort Worth had a repeater, and they were all peered to the Dallas master. As we got more repeaters, we got our seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth repeater in Dallas Fort Worth. They started noticing some network lag, some drop packets, some IP connect disconnects here and there. And their theory was that we had nine repeaters connect nine peered repeaters connected to one master connected to the C bridge. So they redid it, uh, the C bridge, and they said, okay, everybody, here's your IP, and they put everybody on a different port. It's a five digit port. I think my port is 60550, if I remember correctly. Um, and they said, okay, here's your IP, here's your port, tell me what talk groups you want. And he set up everyone on the direct connect to the sea bridge rather than a master. Now the guys down in Houston, there's a guy in Houston, West Houston, that's got a repeater connected to the sea bridge. And there's a guy in Cyprus, which is northwest of Houston, that's got his repeater peered to the Houston repeater. So if you're talking one or two repeaters, three repeaters, it's fine. If you're talking nine or ten, we haven't had any trouble really since they disconnected everything from the master peer system and put everything direct connected to the C bridge. We haven't really had any trouble to speak of in Dallas Fort Worth. Every now and then you have internet problems just like you have internet problems with everything else, you know. But other than that, other than just the regular ISP issues, um, direct connect to the C bridge is better if you're talking to a good number of repeaters. This is the reason that I think DMR is greater than all the other digital modes out there. This is one of the reasons. It's not the only reason. Um, again, I don't have anything against D-Star Fusion. I'm not trying to talk up anything, but DMR at last count had 41 manufacturers worldwide making radios. And yes, there are a lot of them in China, but there's a lot of them elsewhere also. You'll recognize Hytera, um, Harris, Tate, um, Rexon Technology is in Korea, I think. Um, EMC Romulus, uh, they're out of Italy. Um, let's see. I think it's interesting, Yates is not on there. Do what? Yates is not on there. No, Yezu's not on there. No. Vertex Standard is on there. And Vertex Standard used to be owned by Yezu or vice versa before they split off. Vertex Standard is owned by Motorola now. But yeah. Yeah. About the only one who's not on there is Yezu. Everybody else is on there except Yezu. But yeah. So there are. So this is why, you know, right, right now, today, you've got one manufacturer making D-Star, and you've got one manufacturer making Fusion, and that's it. And you've got 41 manufacturers making DMR, and that's why you can get a DMR radio for about 110, 120 bucks right now. And you're going to pay 250 for a D-Star radio and 400 for, for that FT2DR with the big screen from Yezu. Now that's about to change. Um, <coughs> Kenwood's making a tri-band HT that will do D-Star that we saw at Dayton. And they advertised, <laughs> I went up and talked to that guy, the Kenwood guy at Dayton, and they advertised, oh, it's got the AMBE plus two codec chip. It'll be the greatest sounding D-Star radio you've ever heard. And I'm like, yeah, it's got a DMR chip. Of course it will be. Because that's the exact chip that DMR uses. So they've taken the DMR technology and somehow put a AMBE plus two chip in it, so it's going to be great sounding D-Star, but it's going to be D-Star instead of DMR. I heard from somebody about the MB3A being able to There's a guy out of, I think the guy out of Canada hacked it, and he's got experimental firmware that will allow it to receive Fusion and D-Star, and they're working on updating it so it will transmit. Yeah, that's the plan. I haven't seen it, I haven't seen it work yet. But yes, I've seen it work on receive. But yeah. Until Yesu and Icom sues him into a blue. <laughs> yeah. Well, Icom doesn't own the patent on, on uh, D Star anymore. I don't know what the patent term is on Fusion. Yes, sir. D Star's been open source from day one. From day one, I don't think so. From after like. D Star, the Japanese, Japanese <coughs> amateur radio club open source 
There was a reason that no one bought into it except ICOM early on, and I thought it was because they had like a five-year patent. I don't remember though. I mean, because of the way they did their uh, code, the codec <coughs> and the way they programmed it. Yeah. They didn't release the parameters, and no one could figure them out. <laughs> okay. So like okay. Sets of yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, D-Star uses some funky set of parameters. Yeah. The yeah. Well, D-Star still works, but it's old technology. Yes, sir. Is the Motorola going to be using that kind of software too? What? Radios and adapters. No. No. I doubt it. Um, Motorola doesn't have any kind of software. No. No. I doubt it. Motorola, the only bad thing, I've got a Motorola in my truck, I've got, that's a Motorola right there, I've got a couple of Motorola's at home. I, I like Motorola's, Motorola makes a great radio, but these guys who, what, what are commonly referred to as moto heads that go around and talk about how every other radio is junk except a Motorola, whatever. Um, the only bad, <laughs> the, uh, we got one in the back. Okay, okay. The, um, the only bad thing about a Motorola is that, well, besides the fact that they're more expensive, the really the only bad thing is that is that the software is not free. Everybody else has free software. Motorola has, I think the Motorola software is a three-year subscription for 150, it's either 150 or $250, I forget what it is. Do what? Yeah. Yeah, so, but then you have to renew it after a three year subscription if you want to keep using it. So, so the DMR is um, VHS and VSU, or V Store and CFR uh, for his uh, data? Oh, um, I would call, I would liken, um, <laughs> I would liken D Star to uh, a laser disc and, um, DMR to, uh, let me put it this way, I would liken um, D-Star to a original Nintendo. Yeah, that's not, I, I, and, uh, yeah. Because Sony controlled it. Right, correct. And Betamax VHS was actually the better system. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, again, this is just my opinion. I, I think it's better because it's actually more open source. Uh, I, I, that's my opinion. Do you think and, it's better? It's so close to being almost exactly the same that it doesn't really matter as far as the technology and sound quality goes, but Yezu is not dual time slot. Right, right. So in order to get two conversations going on at the same time, you need two repeaters and two frequencies. So there is that going for... The DMR's got the population. I've heard Fusion guys say... I've heard Fusion guys say that there's more f people on Fusion now than DMR will ever have, and it's the best digital network because of that. And I'm like, well, okay, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. Okay, how many of the Yezu system Fusion repeaters in Dallas-Fort Worth, there's probably been three, four, five dozen go up in the last year. How many of those are an all-digital repeater? Most of them are all. Most of them are all. Ours is. One. Ours is all digital. Denton. You guys in Denton? Uh, we're getting, uh, yeah. Lark and Denton yeah. are all digital. I heard there was one more. Where is it? Uh, it's uh, Lark, 443.3. Okay, I think there's one down in Burleson also. Yes. I think there's one down in Burleson. I didn't know Lark had one. Okay, so there's three. So there's three all digital. Now you tell me. People say, oh, there's a lot more Fusion users that are DMR. How many of those are all digital systems? You're not comparing apples to apples. And I'm not saying one's better. Oh, DMR's better because it's all digital. I'm just saying it's not apples to apples. Okay, DMR is the fastest growing digital only system in the United States. Is that good or bad? I don't know. I think it's good, but you know, you can, you can argue that, but Fusion's not all digital. Most, most of the Fusion repeaters are AMS, and most of the ones around me don't ever get used on digital. Right. So. Isn't there a wide band neural issue with all sorts of On D, on which one? Well, on one no, one they're, both, they're both narrow band. They're both, they're both 12 and a half kilohertz when you talk about narrowband. They're both 12 and a half kilohertz wide. DMR splits it into 6.25 channels so you can add TDMA. Fusion has what's called a VW, which I call it very wide. That's not what it stands for, where you can use the entire 12 and a half kilohertz standard for voice only. 
or you can split it in the 6.25 would do half for voice and half for data. That's how you can transmit your location when you're talking. So they're both almost identical with the exception of the fact that Fusion is not TDMA, uh, dual time slot. Yes, sir? Would you thank the police, the low budget police departments, maybe go on the new radios in the future? There we are. I think the police have bought into this P25 thing and spent more money than they should have. Sure. So, so some... Sales. Yeah. Right, right, right. If everyone around you is P25, then you should go P25 or interop. Yes, yeah. But there's, but like I said earlier, there's some, there's some counties in Oklahoma, more of the rural, rural counties that are DMR, have gone DMR instead of for, for budgetary uh, hey, stuff. Line, you yeah, line, yeah. Sorry. Bofang is changing their name to Puxing, if you didn't know. Yeah. So you'll see Puxing on his previous slide. Puxing is Bofang. That's not, that's not right. <laughs> I bought a Bofang and it's got a new name Puxing right on the card. It's got Pofung on it. Pofung. Po you're right. Yeah. You sell them so you yeah. Know. yeah. <laughs> Puxing, the Puxing is basically a Motorola clone. They're Chinese. But your Motorola programming cable, external mic and speaker mic and all that will fit the Puxing radio. And you've got about five minutes left. Okay, yeah, I'll hurry up. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm, I am running late. Okay, this is a picture of some of the radios. That's the CS800 uh, Connect Systems is out of California. They're Chinese-made radios, but they, the company is owned, is owned in the USA. They get them made in China and they distribute them here, so all the support is out of California. Easy to do. That one in the middle is an MD380. That's a Puxing on the far right. The CS700 was one of the first. The CS700 is basically what made DMR popular because back when the, your only choice for DMR was Motorola, the CS700 dropped and it was 180 bucks, brand new, and people just gobbled it up. That one right there is a, another company called Kydera. These are some of your Motorola radios. This this is the guy, the DV4 Mobile that we saw at Dayton. This is a company out of Germany that's making, this is a tri-band radio, 2 meter, 220, 440 analog, that it will do D-Star, DMR, Fusion, and P25 multi-digital mode, out of the box. You said it's a tri-bander, what is it? Tri-bander, 2 meters, 220, and 440. Yeah, yep. That thing's going to be pretty tight. A thousand bucks. Yeah. <laughs> now, okay, I say a thousand dollars for one radio, okay? Yeah. Think about a tri-band mobile radio that does 25 to 40 watts per band, a D-Star radio, a dual-band D-Star radio, and a dual-band fusion radio, and you're already over $1,000 right there. <coughs> right. Right. So, really, it's probably a good deal right there. These are some of your Motorola's. So right there is, uh, that top one is my video series, live from the hamshack.tv. I'll be putting this up there probably in a couple of weeks. I've got other videos up there about DMR. I've got, uh, I recorded the Yezu Fusion presentation given by a friend of mine, uh, Kevin, K5ORN, from the Mansfield Club. It's up there on my channel. I'm, uh, I'm going to be recording a D-Star forum at Oklahoma City Ham Fest next weekend. I'll be putting that up there as well. DMR Mark's website is right there, dmr-marc.net. And then for a list of DMR talk groups, go to turbo.org forward slash talk groups. Is that accurate for Randall? That's 